All right. Well, welcome back to another session here uh, with Snack Time Snippets. I'm Mark Lahart, and with me is Paul Skirbsky. Today's topic is going to be around inventory and inventory items and managing your inventory for, for government contractors that are selling products uh, to the federal government or even commercial companies that maybe you're managing inventory. Um, and there's basically three types of inventory controls or managing inventory levels here. Some are just as a commercial organization, maybe you're bringing product in, you're managing the inventory, doing cycle counts, taking orders, shipping it out um, for commercial businesses. As a government contractor, maybe you're ordering inventory and in just to a specific job. So we're going to share with you some of those capabilities. And if you're a contract-based manufacturer and uh, you're doing some production, uh, then maybe you're purchasing material um, based on demand or requirements for making this particular widget. So we're going to talk with you and discuss some of these different areas and show you some of the standard capabilities within Dynamics 365 Business Central and the GovCon 365 app. So. Paul? All right. Well, thanks, Mark. And like Mark mentioned, I mean, government contractors, you know, some of the requirements are a little different than a commercial company. So, and one of the things that's been a struggle in the past that oftentimes these government contracting systems, inventory is an afterthought. So the exciting thing about Dynamics 365 Business Central is inventory management, you know, is just as strong as the job costing time and expense in the application. So I wanna take you through some of the general capabilities around inventory and talk about those scenarios that Mark discussed. So whether I'm a, a product resale company that just needs a catalog of items that I'm gonna resell and it's all drop shipment, or I'm a company that's managing inventory that needs to go to a project, right? So now material costs, as well as that inventory it needs to be associated with a project, handling both of those scenarios all in one application. So I'm inside of Dynamics. I'm looking at the list of all my inventory items. Just some general things to note, you know, whether I want to you know, view the data by item number, description, replenishment system, et cetera, I can sort and filter by any of these columns. I'm going to search in this case for a particular item. So I'm going to go ahead and type in drone. And here are the three inventory items that have the word drone attached to it. So I've got my drone outer shell, which is something that I purchase. I've got my Super 6 drone is something I make. And then I also have a drone plane that I also can purchase. So I'm going to go ahead and open the drone outer shell and just talk about some of the general capabilities. The first thing I'll just notice is on the right-hand side, I've got the ability to attach an image or I should say insert an image as well as attach any other documents. I can identify attributes related to that item or set a forecast for that item. I'm gonna go ahead and close that screen so I got a little more real estate. I'm gonna open up my item general card or item tab, the general section of it. So I've got my internal inventory num number, description of that item and what type of inventory. So this could be inventory item, a non-inventory item, or maybe it's a service item, something I don't want to necessarily track the quantities on, but I want to know when did I use this item. So that's the concept of a service item. You've got units of measure that are available throughout. So whether it's a purchase unit of measure, a sale unit of measure, or my base unit of measure is typically what I'm counting things in, right? I, I have X number of pieces um, and 20 of these go in a box. So I can create that relationship but when I do my counting, I'm going to say that I've got 20 pieces versus one box. That's my base unit of measure. My global ID number, different ways to categorize that inventory. So an item category code is a way that I can identify, you know, what that item fits into. So in this case, if it's an electrical component, I could have capacitors, connectors, resistors, et cetera. And then if I want to run a report to see what are all of my electrical components in stock and what's the value of it? I can just set a filter on that particular field at either the higher level or the more detailed level within that tree. As I scroll down, I've got information about the inventory 
from a you know uh, overall quantities, whether that's quantity on hand, purchase order, etc. I've got my naming uh, structure for that item, so I've got my base part number. And then if you have to require tracking of revs of parts, I can see what that base part number um, and then revs to that item throughout history. You see the quantity on hand, purchase order, et cetera. All these are drill downs. So when I look at the 239 that are currently on purchase orders, it takes me to all the history of them, whether they're job related or it could be just for general inventory. If I want to open up that document, I just click show document. And now it takes me over to that purchase order that's going to show me more details about the purchase. So things like, when is it supposed to come in? Have any of them come in yet, right? So I can have an expected receipt date, the quantity to received. Maybe it's been partially received already. I'd see all of those details on the PO side of it. As I scroll down for additional information about cost and posting of that data. So this is whether I'm having an item that's standard cost, average, LIFO, FIFO specific. Um, so as I look at the options there, you can set inventory costing. It's going to also show me whatever the last unit cost is. And then as I'm going through the procurement process, I'm going to always have visibility of that last unit cost that's available to me. So I can see the last time I bought it, what did I pay for it? And I can also see what are alternate vendors that I've purchased this from. So if I go into my purchasing tab, I can look at all the approved vendors that I can buy this from. And they can have separate item numbers that they call it, as well as lead times. And at that procurement point, I can see that history so I can make a good, good decision on who I should buy it from based on cost, as well as what that lead time is. For pricing and sales, we mentioned the fact that some companies use this as a resale system, right? So from quote to order. And in this case, the unit price is important because you can't sell an item to the government at a price that's above your commercial price. So the system does some validation there to make sure that that pricing is in line with the fact that you need to give the government your best possible pricing. Replenishment tells me when I need to reorder this or when I need to get more of it, how do I do that? So it could be purchased, which is the example here. We could also have something that's produced or assembled. Those are the three options. You know, when you think about make, buy, or put together, those are the three options. When I do my um, planning on the purchasing side, it'll default to whatever your default replenishment system is, but you can override it, you know, during that planning process if needed. Um, we've got other videos to go more in depth into the production process. So certainly check out other videos on that. But, you know, on the production side, for most of our clients, everything is made to order, right? We're not stocking things for the government. We're making them as we go because oftentimes there's tiny modifications that might happen. Um, we can identify our production bill of material with versioning of that as well as routings if it is something that we make. On the planning tab is some additional details of when we make or buy it, things like reorder points order modifiers, which are, you know, whenever I buy this and my reorder policy is going to drive what options are valid. So when it's order, you know, these options aren't required because I'm only either buying or making what I need. But if I had an item that was set up for maximum quantity, it's going to look at whenever I get to this reorder point, what is the maximum that I order up to? And then with order um, modifiers, this is telling me, you know, whenever I buy this, maybe I always buy it in quantities of 100, right? So that's typically a requirement on the vendor side. Lead time and safety stock quantities. And then finally, the last thing we'll cover is related to item tracking. So this is, if you have something that's serial or lot tracked, the system gives you the ability to, to identify which is required. Do I require serial lot tracking? Or free entry means that, you know, I don't need to input a serial or lot number at all throughout the process. But if it is serial tracked, I can identify when is that serial number required? Maybe it's required at the point that we buy it, at the point we sell it, 
adjustments either in or out of inventory. Same thing on the outbound side. When do I need someone to enter that lot number or serial number? And you can see that there are two separate sections because you know, typically the, the lot and serial numbers don't line up. You know, some items are serial tracked, some are lot tracked. This setup is going to identify which one is required. And then finally, if you have warranties or expiration dates for materials, something that it needs to be used by a certain date, this is where that warranty and expiration, you know, in terms of inventory, something maybe a chemical has a, you know, a shelf life to it. Or you could have an item that if it's going into a certain thing for the government, I need to make sure it's used by X date. And the system will track that expiration date and also make sure that you pull older inventory before you use that newer inventory. So it's a, a different concept of, you know, FIFO. I want to use that inventory, you know, before it expires. Um, and that's a scenario that is oftentimes used for, you know, unique manufacturing scenarios for companies making products for the government. For our clients that are doing contract-based manufacturing, we're oftentimes incorporating the project into it or the job. So one of the things that Microsoft has added against a job card is the ability to pick inventory against the project. So if I'm doing a manufacturing type project, the bill of material like Mark talked about earlier, that's what's gonna drive the demand. We're going to pull inventory from a project location specific to that manufacturing project. You could have a scenario where you've got inventory. I'm a services company, but the kind of services I do, sometimes I need inventory for the project. So I can actually do an inventory pick against the project. And now those material costs are going to automatically come through. So I've got labor costs that will flow through from a timesheet. And then I've got ODCs that could come from an expense report or a purchase order. Or maybe I want to pull inventory from general stock and associate with this project. So these are some of the scenarios where inventory comes into play for our clients. The thing we wanted to highlight is the fact that robust inventory system, it's gonna give you the controls you need. You know, So if you have government requirements where you need to segment that inventory by project, system does it out of the box. It's got all the sophistication in terms of MRP and MPS for those manufacturing companies. And then for companies that are just reselling products, you know, they can go through the whole quote to order process with drop shipments associated with it, as well as being able to identify a contract catalog to manage that inventory. So this gives folks on the call a little insight into inventory management and dynamics. And uh, feel free to check us out for, you know, quote to order as well as manufacturing scenarios. Well, I got a couple questions for you. Yeah. So is this, um, you know, is, this, is it also able to manage GFE type inventory? A absolutely, Mark. So, you know, for clients that have government furnished equipment um, versus, you know, you could also have contract required property. Uh, the inventory management system does have the ability to, you know, track inventory that's not owned by the client. So in essence, zero cost on your books on the balance sheet but you can still track the inventory quantities and they can also still be associated with projects so that when that project ends and you need to tell the government, Hey, I've got these handful of items that are left. What do you want me to do with them? Dispose of them, give them back. But you'll always have that tracking in the system related to that inventory item. Oh, great. Uh, and the other question I have is right. A lot of uh, customers are using, you know, a CRM system like dynamic sales or Salesforce. Is there is there some integrations or how, how would those two types of systems work together with this? Yeah. So obviously with dynamics, um, one of the things that Microsoft has done is they've done a pre-built integration um, between business central and dynamics. So, you know, you can see there's a section here. It says sales quote, Microsoft Dynamics 365 sales. So Microsoft has pre-connected the customer from Business Central. They call it an account inside of sales, inventory items, and also the quotes and invoices. So those things are synchronized. Um, and there's some nice sophistication with it 
uh, that Microsoft has pre-built, but we can also extend it if needed. So Microsoft has their, their common data service, uh, which connects the two, which can be also added to by partners or clients. Great. Well, it sounds, sounds great and very, very useful here. So, well, I think with that, uh, we want to thank everybody for your time to learn a little bit more about the inventory management controls here within Dynamics 365 Business Central. Uh, again, I'm Mark LaHart. To see more of our videos, uh, please visit www.govcon365.com or our video series at our uh, Xtivia YouTube channel. So thanks again. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.